I think um, in due of in, in due of the fact that it's really warm, gentlemen uh, may be allowed to take their jackets and ties off. I'm late to do that. But that's as far as you can go. All right. And ladies too as well, if you would like to take your jackets off, that's fine. <laughs> Sorry. It seems to be a bit provocative, doesn't it? Yeah, it's so popular. Okay. Um, of all the things to do today, I forgot my glasses, so you're just going to have to bear with me. All right, so we just go for this. Um, health and safety requirements are up on the, uh, on the board here, so that's okay. Um, so... Obviously this week's been a spectacularly sad week on Monday. Obviously we had the dreadful occurrence of the bombing in Manchester and that's affected the school quite seriously. And it's our closest neighbour. Um, we have a book of condolences in the front of the, uh, uh, of the chamber there, in the reception area, which I hope people will sign over the next few days. Please come in and sign it. Um, and I'm also deeply grieved by the recent death of former councillor and older woman, Dawn Booth, who was a personal friend of mine. She was somebody I looked up to. I've known her for the best part of 30 years. She was a local councillor. She was chair of the Social Services Committee. Um, so she represented Melrose Ward from 1986 to 1998. She was also conferred as an honorary older woman on the 18th of April 2013, and I was really proud to do that confirmment as Deputy Mayor at that time. On behalf of the Council, may I extend her family the sincere condolences in their sad loss. And can I also ask members to stand for a minute silence for Dawn and for Manchester. Thank you. more pleasant duty now because um, I'm advising members of the recent marriage of Councillor Emma Spurrow and Graham Cooper and to extend to them both on behalf of the council the congratulations and best wishes for the future. Thank you. <laughs> now I get to um, I get to give a little bit of a speech today. Um, as a quick summary of what I've done over this past year. Nothing much, to be honest, I don't much. But, um, so bear with me. Okay. So, my final speech to Councillors Lord Mayor is somewhat different, um, tinged with a little sadness because obviously um, the, the, the week's events in Manchester. Um, so, it's slightly different than the one I would have done, I think, if it hadn't, the Manchester bombing hadn't happened. Um, so, I'll try to keep it fairly upbeat. So, lots of people think that meeting the Queen must have been the highlight of my year, and it was pretty good to be honest, it was quite remarkable. But well, not without its worries and concerns. However, the Lord Lieutenant, is she here today? Is the Lord Lieutenant here? Is she here? No? Okay. She, she sat me down the day before and gave me a stiff talking to, as only Dame Lorna can, uh, and I felt better then because she said, just be yourself, you'll be alright. So I was given a briefing that under no circumstances was it to touch Her Majesty and her nightmares the night before, that she might fall over and I wouldn't be able to pick her up, I'd have to leave her then. So that was a bit worrying. But unfortunately, Roy didn't get the briefing, so he manhandled Prince Philip all around the town hall. 
Uh, we eventually got him out of the tower, so that was fun. So the coup that day actually was arranging for the Lady Mayoress Michelle to chaperone Prince Philip, and they hit it off like a whole house on fire. So they talked about how to cook grouse on a barbecue, because to me, what everybody does that thing. Um, boxing and drinking beer. But it was, uh, she said she knew she was going to hit it off with him when he said, uh, they asked him if he wanted some water, and he said, Good gracious, no, give me some beer, mum. So that was all right. She thought she was sitting with a granddad then, so she was all right. We've had some stunning and well deserved freedom of the city this year that I've attended. David Jakes, the film director, Sir Peter Blake, the artist, the Whitechapel Centre that does some amazing work with our homeless people, James Barton from The Cream. I know Byrne had a great night that night. I'm saying nothing about my view at all. It just stays there, doesn't it? Um, the River Piety Service for their 250 year stint on keeping our river safe. Kenny and Marina Dalgleish, Bishop James Jones, Professor Philip Scraton, and finally all those wonderful individual people who just went to a football match and never came home from Hillsborough. That was probably the most um, emotive day that I spent as well there. There have been a number of ministry events this year with the Centennial of the Song, and our visit there in August last year to present a new black marble plinth in honour of the 2000 Liverpool men who died liberating the village of Guillaume in northern France. We were accompanied by our own standard bearers and the Piper from the Liverpool Scottish Regiment, the Lord Lieutenant, Dame Lorna and her husband Ron, relatives of the fallen and veterans from World War II. It was a unique and emotional trip and we visited a number of British and French cemeteries and one very misty morning visited a German cemetery where more than 20 Germans per grade were crammed in onto each black cross. I was reminded of the axiom of history is written by the victors. This year, the French government also conferred the Légion d'Honneur Medal on surviving veterans of the D-Day landings in France. I'm really proud to be part of those ceremonies and to meet the recipients who are in the 90s now and a remarkable group of men who felt that they only did their duty. Sadly, I've also attended a number of their funerals since as well. Last year marked the 25th anniversary of the Arctic convoys of World War II. The Arctic convoys travelled to relieve the Russian people from the sheer poverty they were suffering due to the German blockade of their ports. Scores of British and American merchant vessels were being sunk on the way to the Russian northern ports to provide food and clothing to the Russian people during World War II. The Arctic convoys provided about 10 to 15 Royal Navy vessels trying to protect up to 15 merchant ships to enable them to get to the Russian ports and to stop the German U-boats from sinking them. They are some of the most perilous seas in the world and I am proud that Liverpool was chosen to host the national anniversary. I was also really proud to receive my late dad's Arctic convoy medal from the first sea lord at that event. It was a complete surprise to both me and my sister, and uh, I have to say there was a lot of tears that day, but it was a very proud moment for me. I've been trying to get that medal for a long time. We've also commemorated the 100th anniversary of the re recipients of the Victoria Cross, and I've been delighted to be part of those events in honour of courageous men who lived in our city, some of whom died while trying to save the lives of others. I've attended a number of 90th and 100th birthday events, and they've been, they've been actually they've been brilliant. Um, all of them were women. One lady was called Speedy Saddle from Kensington. <laughs> yeah, she was Speedy as well. Um, who asked my advice on how to keep a man? I don't know why she asked me that. I don't know. So she said that um, she had no trouble in getting a man, but she couldn't keep him for any length of time. <laughs> so, um, one evening. Um, we were asked to go to St George's Hall to meet and greet a few Americans uh, from the Asamara cruise ship. I'm blaming you here, Angie. This is your fault. Um, to greet some Americans from the Asamara cruise ship who had spent the day in the city. When we arrived, there were 600 sitting down waiting for our grand entrance in the roads and chains. They enjoyed an ent entertaining evening with the Liverpool flavour at St George's Hall. 
I spoke to many of the visitors who told me how wonderful our city was. They loved our architecture, our history, the city centre, the waterfront, but most of all, they told me how much they loved our people. I couldn't really argue with that. It was quite funny because they said, to, would it be allowed to go to if we had our photograph taken with me? So I said, yeah, right then. So Roy said, better still, why don't you stand with us and have the photograph taken? And then they all queued for miles to get the photograph taken. So quite a lengthy process, but it was great, great fun. Uh, and Roy and I got to jive in the Meryl Robes at that event as well, which was a very difficult. Chains, robes, dancing, not good. There was also the time I had a great lunch at the L6 Centre. Gerard, yeah. Gerard? Yeah, mm, he remembers this. A uh, great lunch at the L6 Centre with some older ladies who lunch. I was really bemused by the fact that they were clapping as I left. I didn't know anything about someone there, I thought they were glad to see me go. But anyway, I, I was so bemused it ended up in the room cupboard with the mops instead of the exit. So then I was left with the quandary, do I pretend this is where I really wanted to go? And come out with the mops and buckets and say, it's filthy at this place, I have to get clean. Yeah, it was a difficult moment. So there have been uh, absolutely numerous other events. I could go on forever. And several former Lord Mayors, I don't know whether they're present, no, 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 I don't know, have done just that and went on for more than an hour. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> in their farewell speech, but I've no intention of doing that. But some thanks are in order. Our charity events have been varied and the sub club and other events have been brilliant and organised by my charity committee, which has been chaired by Roy Gladden. And I have to say a massive thanks to him, but also to the charities themselves and their representatives on the committee, and also Charlene Lee, who went above and beyond the call of duty. Hazel Brown, who works for um, Local Solutions, she's been absolutely amazing. Tanya Boucher, um, who ha also helped organise the committee, even though it's not part of her duties at all. And Kate Riley James, who's just been amazing. The charity ball alone on Saturday night raised more than £18,000. So that's just phenomenal. The generosity of people in terms of money, time and energy never fails to surprise me. Thanks must also go to Steve McFarlane and Gary Miller who, instead of having presents at their wedding this year, they urged all their guests to donate to my charities, to the male charities. More than £6,000 was donated from their wedding alone. Steve has never failed to court drunks in terms of donating his time and energy, and he sung his heart out and emceed events and joked his way badly through numerous performances, and I am just so grateful to him. I was all right doing this speech until I got to the bit about the town hall stuff and then it got really choked. So I, there will be tears, all right, we just bear with it. So the town and staff, every single one of them, this year I've seen their numbers diminish, but they still put the scaling face on and produce amazing professional events and take care of the stunning town hall that I love so very much. They take care of the Lord Mayor, the Consort and the Lady Mayoress and it's just legendary their treatment. And I'm so grateful for them to be in there. Without them, we would all look much less polished and professional. And their expertise and advice throughout the year has been amazing. Each of you know the esteem with which I hold you, every single one of you. It's hard to express my thanks to Michelle as Lady Mayoress. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's hard to express my thanks to Michelle. <laughs> it's just hard. Right, sorry. You've been amazing, and I'm so glad to have had you supporting me. Michelle, you've been like a lioness, defending and caring for me in my role, making sure that I enjoyed and remembered every event. We have so many memories together of this year, like the time you turned up at a posh event at St George's Hall, in your very posh white frock, with the security tag still on it. <laughs> she had a pinch, did it? Yeah, she had a honestly. And so the, the mail car I had to take it to the Netherlands two minutes before it shut so to get it taken off. So it was like Star School Hutch outside Netherlands. I think Adam did that that night, it was brilliant. Um, and we also went and got cheesy chips a few times for Michelle in the mail car, which not good really, but very classy. Um, Michelle, you've got a way of dealing with people that makes them feel special. 
You've grown as a person beyond experience this year, expectation this year, and thank you for the very many faith events that you attended with me, because Roy would never do a faith event, including service with an hour long sermon. But he was actually only warming up, wasn't he? We thought he was going to be there for some time longer. But you've done a brilliant job. Thanks so much. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Roy Gladden, what a star. Above and beyond the call of duty on so many occasions. Thank you for being there. Thank you for doing the ironing and the hoovering and the million and one jobs I just didn't wasn't able to help with this year at all. Thank you for picking me up when I felt down or got exhausted or sick. Thank you for telling me to get a grip when that was necessary too, and that was fairly often. Thank you for telling me, thank you for putting up your putting your own life on the back burner, not just this year, but year after year after year to support me. I can't thank you enough, and there are few people know how much that that's cost you. You've got a, been a great ambassador for this city, and you've got a wealth of experience that you've brought to this role. And you've had to, every single morning, you've had to help me find my gloves, my glasses, my phones, my purse, my speech, or a combination of all of them, haven't you? And you've done it with quite a good humour quite a lot of the time. <laughs> Some of the time. But you, you are sick of me now, aren't you? Yeah, he's sick of me now. That will happen, Malcolm. So, my final thanks go to all of you and the people of Liverpool for allowing me to be the first citizen of this amazing city. What an honour for a little girl from Derby. When do you know it's time to go as Lord Mayor? Uh, well, for me, it was when someone told me that I was the best Lord Mayor ever. And for one nanosecond, I almost believed them. And then I realised how stupid that was, because obviously everybody knows it's Gary Miller. <laughs> so, that's it. So, what I'm going to do now, well for a start, I'm going to have a lie down in the darkened room. And I'm going to have a holiday. And for the first time in all my council career, I'm going to be a backbencher. I've been a spokesperson and a chair, I've been deputy leader and deputy mayor. But in all my time, I've never been able to sit on the back bench and eat jelly babies. And I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm going to heckle. I'll tell you now, I'm going to heckle. <laughs> Alan Dean. Um, <laughs> yeah, heckle, Alan. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I'm going to help Jim and Irene represent Club more properly. I'm going to carry on doing great things with the health service because that's my passion. passion. And I'm going to help experience kept teaching councillors how to be better councillors throughout the LGA. I'm going to give back some of that experience that I've managed to gain through 30 years in local government. And I'm also looking forward to starting my master's degree in history in October. And no, just too old to learn something new every single day. And I'm going to spend some time with my dogs and my family and with my husband and I just can't wait. I am so very, very lucky. Thank you.
But I think for me, one of the things that, that uh, Team Gladden, because uh, it was Michelle and Roy as well that, that, that were there, and it was always when I turned up for events, all three of you usually there, and all three working together to represent the city. You mentioned you know, uh, your history in terms of the city. I think it was something that, as a, a close advisor and friend and confidant, we've been through many ups and downs in, in, in the city during very difficult times, and I was proud to have you as my deputy uh, when we ke became the administration in 2010, and as deputy mayor uh, up until uh, 2014. And as far as I'm concerned, I think you've been a star in everything that you've done for the council and for the city. And that's why you deserve the opportunity to be Lord Mayor. And I think you've been a great ambassador for our, our city. And as I said, Michelle and Roy, uh, alongside you, uh, have been fantastic. And I know we've been either doing things in support of you or doing things at home, including looking after the dogs, Michelle and Roy. Uh, while you were away, because I don't want to have to stay on to you. But I think you've been a, a really great uh, mayor. You're right also that, that you know, we, it is very, very difficult, isn't it, uh, to say for you what the highlights were, because I know how important it is for you to do the, the events at schools and the events talking to elderly people or talking to individuals across the city. And I think for, for me, there's nobody that does that better than you, and I think you've absolutely, uh, in my view, uh, spoke volumes in terms of your support for some of the most deprived communities and some of the elderly people within the city over the years. And I know you will pass on uh, not only your uh, advice and, and your counsel to uh, new councillors in the LDA, but I'm absolutely sure that you also stay an integral part of our city moving forward in your role as councillor for Clubmore, but also in supporting whatever administration actually runs this city. And for a long time, that will be a Labour, uh, the Labour Party. But I welcome you back to the back fences, and I know that you will have a huge contribution to make moving forward. On behalf of the Labour uh, group, I want to thank you for all you've done, not just as your year as Lord Mayor, but what you've done previous to that as well. We couldn't have done it without you, so thank you. sadness of the big black car arriving for the last time. The absolute pleasure of the big black car arriving for the last time. She didn't actually put her head in the dark room. She went on to the allotment and got it sorted out after a year's neglect. Uh, like, you were know, the 34th Lord Mayor that I served under. And I must say that there's never been a bad Lord Mayor of this city in my experience. Every person that I've seen as Lord Mayor has played to their strengths. Some people are good at some things, some people are good at others. But you have really represented this city well, with a passion, particularly in those areas which the Mayor has mentioned, health, social care, which you carried on from your political responsibilities into your position uh, as Lord Mayor, raising money and doing good things for people in need in our city. I hope you have a good break. Do not spend all your time on LGA business. It's a killer, I can tell you that. I hope you, Roy, and perhaps even the former Lady Mayoress might spend a bit of time together on holiday, just relaxing. The best of luck and all our thanks. Thank you very much, both. Really appreciate that. So um, I'm going to invite nominations now for the Office of Lord Mayor for 2017-18. Mayor Anderson. Lord Mayor, can I move that um, Councillor Malcolm Kennedy uh, be uh, elected as Lord Mayor for the ensuing year 2017-2018? Lord Mayor, I'd like to second that nomination. Uh, I uh, certainly uh, will do, Lord Mayor. Um, I will uh, keep uh, my comments brief because I know there's a 
an event upstairs where comments will be made about Malcolm and I will uh, just concentrate uh, on uh, my knowledge and experience and friendship with Malcolm. We joined the council 20 years ago uh, together, we were elected uh, at, at the same time. I think we've uh, grown together, developed a friendship together, although we knew each other uh, before we were elected uh, uh, as councillors. Um, uh, Malcolm, of course, everybody knows is from, from Gateshead. We won't hold that uh, uh, against him. He's a Newcastle uh, supporter. Um, which, um, so one thing that is in Malcolm's benefit, he knows how to deal with disappointment. Um, from, from, from the point of view, as you know, I was interviewed before about um, why Malcolm deserved the opportunity to be Lord Mayor of this city. Well, I've just mentioned that 20 years ago Malcolm was elected as a councillor alongside myself. He's actually served um, with complete and total dedication uh, to the city, not only uh, in his role as a ward councillor, but for the last uh, seven years uh, in terms of on the cabinet as the lead member for regeneration. I was um, uh, delighted to go to uh, Malcolm's wedding uh, to Liliana. It's great to see you here, Liliana. Um, and one of the things that was clear that the friendship uh, that and the, the the way people hold Malcolm very very close in terms of their friendship within the Labour group was that there was dozens and dozens of us that went abroad to the to the wedding. And in my old days, not something I'm uh, glad to do often, but it was an enjoyable experience. It was a great experience. And it comes back to Malcolm's total dedication for, for, for our city because I don't believe that the things that have happened in Liverpool uh, in terms of regeneration terms would have happened without Ma Malcolm's dedication and his passion uh, for developing uh, our city. And I can give uh, lots and lots of examples of that, but that's why I believe that Malcolm, not only for your dedication as a ward councillor and the efforts that you put in, but your efforts for the whole city, not just your ward, in what you've done in terms of regeneration, gives me, I believe, the belief that you can uh, be a great Lord Mayor in the next 12 months for our city, and that's why I'm delighted to support this nomination and propose this nomination. And I know, as I said, you will be able to represent our city in the, in the best light. And I'm looking forward to being part of uh, your year and look forward to helping in any way I can, but also uh, being with you as an ambassador for the great city of Liverpool, which has adopted you in one of its own. So well done, Malcolm. I hope you enjoy your year. My honour in support of my seconding of uh, Councillor Kennedy. Uh, again, I'd like to concur uh, a lot with a lot of what the uh, elected mayor has said. Uh, I was very much reminded uh, of the fact that, uh, like me, Malcolm is a blowing. When I was on my way to meet the mayor this morning, and there was a big Newcastle brown lorry just on the back door of the town hall. So I'm sure there'll be a few canny lads and lasses that have come uh, to support Malcolm today and be having a good do. Uh, tonight. Uh, regeneration is always a very difficult portfolio. It's a portfolio where you have to blend the old with the new. You have to respect the past and bring in new ideas. You have to respect old buildings and bring in new buildings. You have to be thinking 20 years ahead, at least because of what we build now, the roads we build now, we'll have to serve for at least 20 years, possibly 200 at the rate that we currently have to do things. That long-term portfolio is not an easy one to fill, and I think Councillor Kennedy has filled it very well. Although I haven't always agreed with some of his decisions, it must be said. But I'd just like to give one specific example, uh, which uh, it was in my own ward, where I thought that the role that Councillor Kennedy played was an exemplar to all of us. And that is in the procurement exercise for the mansion house in Conderstones Park. The council had a problem, £400,000 for a building which needed two or three million, actually it ended up as five million spending on it, which we didn't have. The first thing he did was to approach me as the ward councillor so that we could put together his citywide brief with my local knowledge. We then brought in 
other councillors, we brought in friends of, of the park, we did a comprehensive uh, discussion and exercise, uh, and then we took a decision and jointly fought it through, and he and I attended uh, a meeting where we were very much like a tag team, because there were some really nasty people criticising what we'd done in entirely the wrong terms. I don't mind people criticising what we'd done, but the way they were doing it was absolutely disgusting. And we supported each other. Different political parties, control, opposition, it didn't matter because we had the right course of action and we stuck to it together. That is the spirit in which Malcolm Kennedy approaches his politics and that is why I'm absolutely convinced Malcolm, you will make a superb ambassador for our city. I'm proud to second the nomination. I've got to know Malcolm because I am a member of the Regeneration Select Committee, so he and I spent many enjoyable meetings discussion, discussing the finer, finer points of regeneration, housing, transport, sustainability, all those important issues, and it's always been a pleasure to do so. It has occasionally got heated. Actually, pretty much every time we've spoken, it's got heated, I think, now. But that's fine, that's the way, that's the way it should be. Um, but the frustration for me is that I'm sure I was just beginning to win you over with my green vision for a better Liverpool, and now you've gone and put yourself in a new job, so I've got to go back to square one. But thank you anyway, and uh, enjoy your time. You'd be a great world mayor. My knowledge of Malcolm Kennedy goes back for approximately 38 years. And uh, at that point he was a resident of Suburban Road. And he had a Labour poster up for a candidate whose name we won't mention, of a different tradition. I won't impose Malcolm now, so. But um, um, one of the things that always strike about Malcolm, and I remember when I was speaking to uh, the Chamber about um, the nomination for Ross, I said in very matter of fact way, one of the things I've always found about her, and I'm sure is also true of Malcolm, which is why I'm really enthusiastic about her, is precision and fairness. Absolute precision and fairness. A knowledge of the area that they have an expertise in. A passion, even if you may not come to the same conclusion, a passion for the issues. But also a precision that if you ask them questions, they give you a very precise, no bars, answer and if they don't know they'll be up front and come back to you. And I think that diligence, that's the word I use, that diligence will add a lot of value to the role of mayor. And I think if I be candid, I think one of the things that are particularly going to strength, I think Malcolm would be an incredible uh, mayor for reaching out to a business community. I think that's something that's important to the city and something I know you'll add a lot of value. I wish you well. Um, Notice you don't live in suburban any road anymore, we won't hold it against you. I wish you well, and I'm sure you'll do the city proud. Thank you very much. Thanks, Steve. Uh, can I ask if there are any other nominations? No. Okay. Right. Can we put it to the council then? But, uh... We have to agree. Agreed? Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah. Okay, right, off we go.
a lot of wet tissue papers up here. <laughs> I, I know you said you're going to, to shed a few tears for us, but... Uh, <laughs> hero worship by my wife um, and that's to do with the wedding that, that Joe talked about and uh, Roz and Roy came in their motorhome all the way from England through France through Spain and ended up near Madrid uh, but not only that they didn't just come to the wedding they came to the party of the century at uh, Serene and Gertrude's house um, to enjoy the barbecue and slept in the motorhome on a spare piece of land uh, next to the house. That night they actually wanted to go to bed early but my wife prevented them and this was uh, totally out of the uh, utmost ad admiration for him. Um, secondly, because nobody's allowed to leave a Romanian party early. Um, but honestly, for that, Roz and Roy are, are both just greatly in my wife's heart because of it. Um, so there are many other of my guests here tonight who will be um, as pleased to see uh, Roz because of that. You can't move this chair, can you? It's not as, uh, it's not as easy. Is it on wheels? Oh, that's a good idea. Does it have an engine as well? Somebody give it a push. Um, <clears throat> because quite frankly, Ross is as loved in Madrid as she is in Liverpool. She's the perfect Lord Mayor because she has the natural ability to be both serious and light-hearted at the same time. She raises the spirits of those around her. She's been a great example to me as she's carried out her duties. I know she will be sorely missed and I have a job in my hands to fulfil the expectations she has raised about how a Lord Mayor should go about the business of the role. I couldn't say I have big shoes to fill as her feet are a lot more dainty than mine, but I tell you what, I have no chance of looking as glamorous in the robes as she does. Whether it's been at events of the scale of the Remembrance Service at St. George's Hall or at a ceremony in the Anglican Cathedral, both of, whom, both of which I witnessed, or whether it's been on a smaller scale, such as the ceremony last week to commemorate the Victoria Cross awarded to the Kirkdale hero Albert White uh, in the gardens of Liverpool Parish Church, Ros has represented the city to perfection. On top of that, it's already been mentioned how much she has raised for the, the charities she chose. But it's been the personal touches that have made Ross stand out. It was typical of Ross yesterday to come into the office and tell me to come through and meet her dogs. A small photo shoot was taking place with the Lord Mayor of Trio and their two dogs on the staircase of the town hall. It was a lovely family occasion, and because she knew I shared her passion for pictures, she asked me to come through and say hello to them all. Thank you, Ros, for the marvellous example you've set. Uh, I will try and live up to the standards you have set, but do enjoy your upcoming break. If you want to go to Madrid, you will be welcome there. Uh, that is true, it is well deserved. But do come back and join the fray. Liverpool politics needs people like you as much as it ever did. Thank you. <clears throat> and I believe I now have to present you with uh, your former Lord Mayor's badge.
it says I have to make my opening speech. Here we go then. At the age of 23, I first came into this town hall. 23 years old I was. I'd been in Liverpool for three years. Uh, I was on the academic board of my teacher training college and I met the Lord Mayor. His name was Councillor Paul Orr. He was the councillor for Sands Hills Vauxhall Ward. <clears throat> I had no idea that the next time I would meet him I would be the guest speaker um, at the local ward meeting at which he was reselected as the candidate for the 1984 election.